At first you might think the Goldfinger 54.5 is its single channel and small size is a one trick pony. But you'd be very wrong my friends. I've incorporated some killer features that expand the sonic flexibility of this amp greatly. <laughs> Well, this amplifier was designed for two types of players. One would be the guy who uses a bunch of pedals in front of the amplifier, who wants a high headroom, firm sounding amplifier that takes the pedals well. The other type of player would be more like a player like myself, who prefer a vintage sounding amplifier, where you go straight on the amplifier, incorporate some of the boost functions for soloing and the built-in reverb, that want more of like an early breakup in the power amp and also some sustain from the amplifier. Let's go over the faceplate. The input check, the expand switch is low and high, gain control, master volume, three band EQ, treble, mid, bass, the back EQ switch which changes the EQ architecture, the solo boost, the adjustable boost, and then the presence, reverb control, effects loop level control, standby high and low switch, and the on off power switch. Now here we have boost number one that's fully adjustable like a flat boost, kind of a gain boost in front of the first stage of the amplifier. Then the second boost is the solo boost, which is kind of more like a fattening effect. Both are foot switchable. So basically the single channel amplifier will give you four levels of gain on the fly of the foot switch. Basically like a non-boosted sound, solo boost on or the regular boost on, or both boosts on at the same time. The four button foot switch that comes with the amplifier First is the boost button for the flexible boost, the solo boost which is a fixed boost, effects loop on and off button and then the reverb on and off switch. My favorite feature of this amplifier is the back EQ switch. When it's off, you have your typical vintage sounding EQ that's like really rich and full sounding. Once you engage it, you get a more refined and tighter focused sound. The thing you should keep in mind is once it's on, you have a few losses occurring and you might want to counterbalance this with the bass control slightly higher and the gain a little bit higher. So this in the studio or different band situation will give you a totally different character of the amplifier and I really encourage you to play around with different settings to explore the full range of this amplifier. Next here we have the expand switch section. The low will beef up a synth sounding guitar and the high will bring out like a brightness and sparkle of a dull sounding guitar. Both switches are less effective the higher the gain is set. <laughs> Thank you.
So the most exciting feature of this amplifier is it goes from 9 to 66 watts. And no matter what the palm setting is, it feels and sounds incredible alive. So over here we have two 636s, very creamy and like lower headroom sounding, which can be engaged with this switch over here. Then we have the next pair, the 606s, more bold or higher headroom sounding tubes that can be engaged over here or a combination of both. Then we have the three position standby switch, which can have a high plate voltage or a low plate voltage selection. The combination of the mute switches and the standby switch now gives you six different types of flavors and power ratings that takes you from the bedroom to the big festival stages. Here we have the line-out control. It's a flat frequency response, fully adjustable level that can be used to feed your wet dry rig or any of the impulse response recording technologies. So the Goldfinger 545 family entails the head amplifier, the 112 combo, the 112 extension cabinet, and the 212 extension cabinet. All the cabinets, including the combo, are constructed out of pine, which is very resonant and vintagey sounding. Versatile and pure, that's the Goldfinger 545. But as you can see, it's quite a sonic Pandora's box. Until next time, I wish you inspiring tone.